Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today I want to do a little bit of a video on how I handle things when things get damaged in transit. A few weeks ago I worked on a couple of Nintendo Switches for a business to business customer and that's basically where a business will send me the repairs that they get from their clients and then I'll invoice the business and they invoice the client. So a couple of weeks ago I worked on these two Nintendo Switches and when I sent them back I tried to package them up as best as I could but unfortunately they were damaged during transit. So I sent them with UPS which is a company that I always use. I always use UPS when I'm sending large packages, heavy packages back and in fact I use them for pretty much everything apart from Nintendo Switches when they're on their own. These ones were packaged along with some PlayStation 4s and PlayStation 5s and unfortunately something happened during transit and these two got damaged. So I want to be very very clear here, it was me that packaged these up. I did package them up to the best of my ability but unfortunately they still got damaged. Now the package was insured and the insurance is going to be something that I'm going through, that is ongoing. I've already lodged a claim with UPS, however I can't really delay these any further in getting them back to the customers. So I thought I'd do this video just explaining my process for when something like this happens during transit. So if it happens during transit where the customer has sent it to me or the business customer has sent it to me then they would obviously have to deal with it. But if I send something out then ultimately until that reaches the customer in a safe condition or in a good condition or the condition that it was sent to me in I'm responsible and that means that I've got to cover these under warranty so I can't remember I haven't actually looked on the system what I actually did to these but they were both working when they went back to the business to business customer and now unfortunately they've been damaged they've either been cracked or um, I think one of them has been cracked uh, quite severely and the other one I don't think works at all. So yeah, if it's a case where I can't get the one of them working or even both of them, then I'm going to have to unfortunately replace the devices. However, I'm going to try and get them both working. So the plan for this is going to be, I've got some brand new housings. So brand new housings. I've got brand new digitizers in this box here. Don't worry if you can see my address. My address is public anyway. But... I'm basically going to be doing a complete shell swap with brand new parts and then the LCDs I'm going to be taking from some spare consoles I've got because obviously if the LCD is covered underneath a digitizer then it's it's going to be in mint condition but ultimately I'm technically on the hook for this until the insurance pays out so I thought I'd do a video on this and try and fix these two devices in one video. But that being said, if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications and that way you don't miss any future videos. And if you do want to support me in any way, then you can head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account to Twitch and then subscribing to my channel. Absolutely free for you, but it does massively help me out. There'll be a link in the video description to that as well as a link to Patreon where you can become a Patreon sponsor as well. But that being said, let's get into this repair. Okay, so I've got the parts just here. Uh, let's just zoom in on this so I can show you the kind of damage. If I can't get it on video, then I'll show you the pictures that I sent to UPS. But if we take a look here on this first one, let me just get these stickers off that we've got the customer details on. There we go. That contains names and stuff. But on this one here, we've got a crack just here. And I think this is probably going to be the one that doesn't turn on. We've also got some missing plastic here, so that's been damaged as well. The heatsink shouldn't be that much of a problem, but we also have a little bit of bending going on there as well. So that's one of them. And then this one, as you'll see, we've got some scratches all around here, which wasn't there before. We've also got, I think there was some cracks and dents on this one. We've got a dent just down here. You can't really see that on the video. Oh, there you go. So we've got a, a little dent there, an impact mark there. You'll have to excuse the focus. We've got another bit of damage here. And then we've got a crack here. So obviously these have been pretty badly damaged in terms of 
uh, you know, just normal shipping damage. So I think we'll work on this one first. So I'll move this one out of the way. And like I said, the intention here is to replace the housings with some brand new housings, brand new digitizers, brand new back cover. The game card cover and this part here, the uh, SD card cover and kickstand, that will be reused. I'll take that off this housing. But other than that, we're going to be replacing it with new parts, apart from the Joy-Con rails, as long as they're okay. But they do look fine on this one. So we should be all good there. I've got a brand new, well, two brand new digitizers here, which I ordered in anticipation for these consoles turning up because I knew they was coming back to me. And I've also got the two brand new housings here as well. So I'm going to be building some cases first and then we can do some part swaps and hopefully they'll work afterwards. If we zoom out a little bit, I'll just give the devices a test. Or rather, I'll give this one a test and then we'll test the other one when we work on it. So again, like I say, I want to make it very clear here that I'm not blaming anyone for this. I packaged them up. Obviously, I didn't package them up well enough, which means that I am responsible for them. They didn't arrive back safely, so I've got to cover them. Let's just have a look what's going on. So we've got 0.48 amps there. Okay, and we've got a broken LCD. Yeah. And also looks like the charge port may be dodgy as well. That is charging, and it is turning on, but the, this housing, it really can't be reused. Uh, that charge port feels loose, however, I don't think that's something that I did in terms of the original repair, but I'll probably change it anyway just for the sake of completion. Okay, so we need to build a housing for this first one then. So first things first, I'm going to be working with an LCD, so I'm going to need to put some gloves on, just so as I don't smudge up the LCD. And here I've got a chassis which I can use, so I know this looks all messed up, this is just a spare chassis. But what I can do with this is, I can take the digitizer off this, use this mid-frame, because I know this battery is good. So I can use the mid-frame, it's got everything I need. So it's got the LCD, so all I need to do realistically is replace the outer frame and the digitizer. So that's going to be the plan for this one, and then I can just do a board swap. So a lot of this I might end up fast forwarding through because I've got two to get through in this video. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my hot air at 160 degrees Celsius and I'm going to heat this up. Now, you might be wondering, I mean, this would probably clean up okay. It's just a bit of gunk on there, probably flux and stuff from when I've been handling it with dirty hands. So, realistically, because this case is in okay condition, I could technically use it. But, if I'm going to be repairing these, I may as well repair them with brand new parts and keep the customer nice and happy. They're going to get a nice mint condition. Nintendo Switch back. All being well. I don't recommend doing this if you're trying to salvage the outer chassis. Not with a metal pro tool. In this case, I'm just using tweezers. But I'm not trying to salvage anything apart from the LCD and the outer, well, the mid frame, sorry, not the outer frame. Because I'm going to be replacing the outer frame. And I'm not going to be trying to salvage the LCD. I'll probably use it as a test LCD, but that's about it. All you got to do is just keep heating it up. If you feel any resistance, heat it up some more. Okay, now I've got my entry point. I can keep some pressure on the digitizer and just warm up the sides. And it should just basically remove itself. They're not difficult to remove. There we go. Remove that LCD. And then I can take out the outer frame. So I'm just removing the button there.
Okay, I did forget the light sensor there. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> never mind. Uh, next, it'll be on to the LCD. So I'm going to pop that in there. I'm going to need to give it a wipe down. Okay, next up, I'm going to take the B7000 glue. I'm just going to put a reasonable little bead. Never cover screws, light sensors, things like that with glue. All right, I'm going to leave that to dry for a little bit just while I'm prepping the digitizer. I'm also just going to get little bits off the glass again because, yeah, it really doesn't take long for it to gather up. I think the LCD needs to come back out a minute. Just so as I can clean it fully. Right, that'll do for now. I've got a brand new digitizer. And there's the foam back on there. So now, once I finally get this clean, we're good to go. I hate cleaning LCDs. I hate doing LCDs full stop, if I'm being honest. Okay, I'm not seeing any scratches or anything on there, which is good. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to set. We've got the glass on. This is still got a protector over it as well, so that'll get left on there. I'll get rid of that little bit of glue overspill once it's dried. So now we'll just pop in these buttons. These can get fairly awkward. All right, buttons in place, all lined up. And there we go, there's the rubber in place as well. Okay, that's all done. So we've got a nice brand spanking new housing. So the next step for me is gonna be to got this one but first of all I need the sticker from this so I'll just warm that sticker up a little bit
and then I can place it on that one. So near the serial number is going to match. Let's get rid of that serial number. That was a random board that I had lying around, which is now sold. But now I can put the guts out of this one into that one, and we should, keyword should, have a working device. Right, I just had to drill out a screw because it just didn't want to come out. Uh, I got it. Cool. I would have broken the chassis from the other side if I had to, and just chiseled away from the other side. Well, there you go. That was pretty scary for a second. I thought I wasn't going to be able to get that board out. But we got it. Eventually. Alright. The rest of this is... Well, not scrap. There's still parts which are usable on there. Speakers. Battery. Um, I need the uh, fan, I think. But now I can just drop this board in. Okay, and it is time for the moment of truth. Do we have a working switch? No, that LCD is not working. Why? The backlight comes on. Please don't tell me that this LCD is faulty. I will be rather upset. Oh no. Uh oh. So the backlight's coming on. Not getting no display. Yeah, I'll get no display. Yeah, it's not displaying. That LCD must have gone bad since the last time I tested it. Wow, that's annoying. <laughs> that is so annoying. It really is. Right, uh, bit of a jump cut. Like a moron, I press pause on the keyboard. So, bit of a jump cut here, but I'm not sure where it actually paused. But uh, I've replaced the replaced the screen again. Um, so there's the screen that I did originally put in. I've replaced the screen again, put it all back together. The screen and touch screen appear to be working. And uh, that Joy-Con works. And that one doesn't for some reason. Hmm. Okay, it's just the Joy-Con. All right, well... There we go. So Joy-Cons are working, touchscreens working, displays working, all of that good stuff. So it's pretty much just time to put this back together. So that's what I'm doing now. Apologies for the jump cut there. I guess I will save me some time on the video. But yeah, all I did was just replace the LCD again and put it back together once again. So my apologies, but it all appears to be working absolutely fine anyway. Okay, there we go. 
pop a warranty sticker on there. And then the final step for this is going to be to just take the bits off this back cover. And drop them onto the new back cover. Why am I taking that off there? I don't need to. So we'll take the kickstand. And the cover. I'm going to drop them onto the new one. Okay. And then finally, we'll take these mesh vents. There's one. There's two. Okay, and there we go. One final clean. spill and generally comes off with a bit of IPA some reason Restart that a second. Okay. For some reason, the digitizer is not working now. I'll clean them in a minute by the way. That will come off with a bit of IPA. Just smear marks. That's not working. Oh, this is annoying, man. <laughs> Bloody thing come loose. Okay, digitize is working.
There you go. There we go. All done. Well, that's one refurbished Nintendo Switch. So, yeah. Kind of lucky on that one because, obviously, we've managed to get it working without having to actually spend any money on components. Now, I have had to replace the housing and the screen. So, that cost me about £40. Maybe a little bit more. Um, £25, £45? That would cost me. Which, I'm obviously going to have to claim back on the insurance. But, whether they'll pay out, I don't actually know. I'm hoping so. But, uh, yeah. I'm going to have to do a follow-up video for Switch number 2. Because this has been going on a little bit too long. Unfortunately, the length of video that people like to see, which is around about 20-25 minutes, I'm not going to be able to compress two repairs into that. But this one is done and looking pretty much mint. Um, yeah, I guess we live and learn. I guess I need to learn to package them up better. Because, yeah, I've got to take responsibility. I have to take responsibility. It's not... I mean, yeah, it's on, it's on the courier, but it's not on the customer to have to foot the bill for it and it's also not on the customer to have to wait for it while I wait for insurance to pay out. It's something that I've got to deal with there and then and if that means footing the bill for it or putting money up front but while I'm waiting for insurance to pay out then yeah it, it happens. It's just part of the job. You're going to get things like that when you do this for a living um, or when you do repairs for customers. So yeah. You know, it is what it is. Sometimes things get broken. And, uh, yeah, we just do our best to fix it. And if we can't fix it, we have to replace it. So, that's going to be for this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. Have you ever had a cover your company break something when you've sent it back to a customer or something like that? Um, yeah, I'd love to hear what people what people have got to say. Generally, I don't have an issue with UPS. And uh, as far as I'm aware, I've never had to make a claim with UPS yet. But... As far as I'm aware, they do pay out generally without question, but I do have photographic evidence, and I've also got the video to prove it as well. So, yeah, I'm going to do two parts. I'm going to do the other one in another video, so make sure you stick around for that, and make sure you get subscribed if you're not already, and uh, we'll see what's wrong with that one as well. If you do want to organise a repair, you can get in touch using the website in the video description, consolefix.co.uk. You can book in the repair or you can get in touch if you've got a question about a particular repair. We're also on Discord as well, so if you want help with a repair that you're working on, then please head over to Discord. There's many, many people who are very skilled and always, always happy to help. If you do want to support the channel, like I said earlier, you can head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account, and that way it doesn't cost you a penny, but it does massively support the channel. Or there's a Patreon link in the video description as well. But with that being said, that is going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.